Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My wife cheated and destroyed our marriage. Now I'm confronting her lies and moving on, but she wants me back. I discovered my STBXW cheating about seven months ago. I went through all the heartache, the denial, the pain, the pick-me attempts. I was seriously depressed for a long while. I never confronted her, but I was a total mess. She must have known I knew. She just didn't care, I guess, or at least I assumed that. About two to three months ago, I was just done with it all. Done with her. Done with the marriage. I just didn't care anymore. I completely checked out of the relationship and started preparing for divorce and my new life to come. I avoided my wife as much as possible. I tried to stay out of the house when she was home. I would not engage in conversation. When she asked me a question, I would only answer yes, no, or maybe, or I don't know. I even left the divorce lawyer's bills out in the open. She must have known I was checked out and preparing to divorce. Kids even asked me about it. Even they could see what was going on. I even did the, we both love you speech. It's not your fault sometimes grown-ups can't be together anymore, Iteta. My wife was actually in the room and must have heard me talk to the kids. She didn't comment or object. I took her silence as consent. Anyways, a few days ago I met a girl I used to know in school before I ever met my wife. We always had this tension between us, some kind of chemistry. We would always flirt and be touchy, but we never actually did anything about it. Let's call her Monica. Because I think she, she looks like Monica Bellucci. Monica and her family moved away before I found the guts actually do anything about it. I regretted that for a long time, but I was young, shy, and stupid. I haven't been thinking about Monica for a long time, actually. I haven't seen her for years, but as soon we met, the tension between us was palpable. Even more than I remember, and communication was effortless. She actually asked me out. I explained the situation to her with my STBXWXW. I told her I wanted to be officially separated before I started dating. I wasn't going to cheat. Monica respected that. She gave me her number and told me to give her a call as soon as I was done doing what I had to do. She told me she never married and she was really excited to get to know me again. I was even more excited. The encounter motivated me to finally confront my wife and officially get separation and divorce going. I was really happy when I went home and sat down waiting for my wife. I was actually grinning like a lunatic when I asked her to sit down and told her that we had to talk. I told her I've known about her cheating for a long time. I told her I assumed that she knew I knew especially since I checked out of our relationship for the last three-ish months. She didn't seem to mind that I no longer care. So, I told her I want to start dating and get on with my life. I concluded my speech with, all taken into consideration, it's time for us to get divorced, don't you agree? Her reaction was totally not what I expected. She started crying, not just regular crying either. Like a desperate soul-breaking noise, I have never heard anything like it. She was blabbering excuses, asking for second chances, that the affair didn't mean anything. But we could fix this if we try counseling. I was a bit shocked I thought she would be happy. I told her she could go and be with this guy without guilt. He is obviously more important to her than her family. If he wasn't, why go with him in the first place? She must have known this would destroy us. She can't possibly be that stupid, can she? I told her if she believed we needed fix our family or our marriage, the time to do that would have been seven months ago before she had the affair. Now it's too late, it's broken beyond repair. I didn't think we had any problems in our marriage, she didn't talk to me, and I am not a mind reader, so whatever it was I had no way of fixing it. Since she started this affair with the other guy she obviously thought something was wrong or missing. Something that was so wrong that it couldn't be solved by talking to me. Something had to be so lacking or so wrong that she was okay with having our children grow up and are broken from there on in? If not, why do it? I clearly and calmly explained that there is no way for her to you this guy for the last seven months, and there is no way to undo the pain and suffering she caused me. The pain she caused that made me arrived at this point of basically being indifferent. Or actually, I kind of hate her guts. I'm simply being civil for the sake of being able to co-parent our children in the future. I told her I didn't believe she ever cared about me. No person that cared even a little for someone else would put them through this kind of pain. They would not betray them in such a way that she had done. Her telling me that she loves me has no meaning or credibility, because her actions conclusively prove otherwise. She became completely incoherent at this point. I could not make heads or tails of anything she said. It's just a jumbled mess. In the end, I had to call her sister. Because honestly, I wasn't going to take care of her. Her sister showed up and after I explained what was going on, she took her away. I felt tremendous relief when they were gone. Life I could finally breath for the first time in seven months. I don't know what I'm looking for here. She must have known this was going to happen. She must have wanted it. She can't possibly be that stupid that she thinks this behavior, these choices she made, would result in anything other than divorce and a broken family.
She is beautiful, she is smart, our marriage was great up until she started her affair. I have accepted that life changes, I have moved past it. Now she is pretending like she loves me? That she wants us to remain married in a family? What could possibly be her motivation to have this major drama at this point? What could she gain? I mean, she couldn't possibly expect us to try to reconcile at this point. Could she? It must be some kind of ploy? I just can't figure out WTF it is? I have lots of evidence of her cheating. I live in a European country, and this would mean no alimony or anything for her. Could that be it? Is she afraid I will out her? Could that be it? She wants me to feel sympathy so I don't tell people about what she did. Her AP is married so maybe she is scared I will her as wife? I just can't get my head around it. Anyway, I just had to get this out of my head. I was hoping it would make more sense typed out. But no, I am just as confused now as when I started this rant. Update, my cheating STBXW confuses the hell out of me. So first of all, thank you to everyone. It's been overwhelming in many ways. I haven't had a chance to answer everyone, but I have tried to read everything. I posted three days after the conversation with my STBXW and I had hardly slept. Actually, I passed out reading messages on my computer. When I woke up the next day, I had an interesting keyboard pattern on my face and a much clearer mind. I decided to make some lists, for and against on, on the key points. I put a bunch of papers on the wall. I made a headline on each of them. Our kids? How to behave when meeting the wife? My marriage? Monica? Questions to ask my wife? Etc. The final document is too big to retype here, so I will just cover some of the main points. My goal was trying to figure out what core principles I wanted in place and what are the most important things that I wanted to focus on. Then I went through each of those and evaluated whether or not I would actually be able to achieve anything meaningful from it and what would be a meaningful result in the case I got anywhere. As for the kids, they are my number one priority. I will increase my efforts to help them deal with this. More individual counseling, family counseling, I will arrange trips and spend more quality time together and make new memories. I will also involve the rest of the family on my side to drown them in love and help them through this. I will also talk to their teachers, coaches, etc. I want to make sure their support system is immediate and everywhere. I got an SDI test, and I've also booked DNA testing of the kids. Just thinking they might not be mine makes me very uncomfortable, but I have to make sure for their sake. If they're not mine, maybe there is some medical history they need to know about. What if they want to reach out to the real father when they get older? How will they see me if I don't act now to make sure? Hopefully they are mine and I will be stressed until I get it confirmed one way or the other. After talking alone to their therapists first, they joined us and we explained everything carefully and let them ask as many questions as they wanted. I repeated over and over and over again that they could come to me with anything. I am their dad. I love them more than anything and I will always, always be there for them. Whatever they need, no matter what. As for my marriage, I came to the conclusion that I can never trust my wife again. Without trust, it's not possible to have a relationship. I also came to the conclusion that I do not love my wife. I don't love the person she has become. My love for her used a very big part of me, but she killed that with the affair. It totally changed my perception of her. Maybe I could learn to love her again, but to be able to do that I would have to want that, and TBH I don't want to. Better to end it and get on with our lives. I no longer want this marriage. I don't want our relationship. I don't don't want her. The part of me that loved her. The part of me that loved her. The part of me that used to feel endless joy and happiness when thinking about her. That now fills me with dread and memories of pain. Actually, any thought of association with her causes me serious discomfort at the moment. Divorce is inevitable, I think. And I want to get it done as soon as possible. As for Monica, I talked a lot to her. I had some concerns based on the feedback I had here on Reddit. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to jump into a new relationship. I also didn't want to bring her into my mess. And let's face it, my life is a total mess at the moment. She disagreed. She said life is messy. Might as well see how we deal with that together while dating. I found out why she never married. She was engaged, actually. Her fiancé died unexpectedly in a work accident almost five years ago. This devastated her, and even though she had gone on a few dates since, she had not been able to form a connection with anyone. From her perspective, life is short, and you have to take risks whenever a true opportunity presents itself. I explain how I don't want to start anything until after the divorce is official. I don't want to cheat while I am technically married. She agrees and respects that. I also talked about how it could be perceived if we all of a sudden were an item out in the open for everyone to see. It would be easy to try to frame her as the homewrecker. I don't want that, she agreed, and we will wait a little bit after it's official until we do anything. I feel incredibly drawn to Monica. 
This phone call is a borderline emotional affair in my mind, so I will not contact her again until I am done with legal separation. We agreed that I would get my affairs in order and contact her when I was ready, and we would see what we do then. When it came to planning the meeting with my wife, I wrote down some principles on who I want to be. I would make every effort in my meeting with her to try to be that man, the man I used to be before all this. I decided I needed to stay calm. I would make every effort not to be cruel. I would keep in mind that the purpose of this conversation was to move on with our life. The purpose was to be able to co-parent as good as possible for our kids. Still, I prepared a list of questions to try to understand her thinking to have this affair, and also what she was thinking about moving forward. I was not going to be deceitful. I was not going to give her false hope that there was a chance to reconcile just to get a post-nup or some benefit in divorce. I have decided to act as fairly as possible. I will divide all assets with her equally. We will have 5050 custody. Even though she has acted terribly towards me, I will not use her as a role model. I will act so I can stand by my actions today, tomorrow and 20 years from now. I hate her for what she did to me, what she did to us, to our children, but I love the memories of the good times we had together, while it lasted. And I love our children that we created and raised together. I will try to remember her in this light moving forward, not her cheating. I can't carry hate in my heart so at tea some point I need to forgive her so I can move on. Up until the point she cheated I think we had a very good marriage, we would make love every day. We spent a lot of quality time together. We hardly ever argued. We sacrificed for each other willingly. I was actually very open with her up until I discovered her infidelity. I believed she was open with me as well, but now her actions shows this not to be the case. So Saturday came and I went to see her. Her sister had warned me that she was not in good shape. She was not wrong. My STBXW looked absolutely horrible. Bloodshot eyes, swollen face, unkept hair. She looked many sizes smaller than I remember, like she had imploded into herself. I doubt she has slept or eaten much this week. We all sat down and my wife was shaking almost uncontrollably. I felt surprisingly calm. I felt for her obvious pain, but not as a loving spouse. I felt for her pain like I would feel for an actor in a movie I was engaged in. I don't know how to explain the feeling really. It confirmed that I probably don't love her anymore. I just sat there and waited for her to collect herself enough to speak. She started several times but would break down crying. Watching her it's clear it's not an act. I have seen her cry many times before but never like this. I guess people can fake cry, but I doubt anyone can fake the look of crying nonstop for a week mixed with soul-torturing sobs and giant snot bubbles. When she finally started talking it was like a damn burst. She apologized every second word. Surprisingly she didn't try to excuse herself or shift the blame to me. Her sister cried as well and would from time to time berate her. It also became clear that her sister had warned her this would happen. Apparently it's how her sister lost her fiancé year back. I didn't know that. Her sister's cheating gave my wife a midlife crisis of sorts. She started to think about cheating a lot. In the end it seems she did this because she got infatuated slash a crush on the guy and couldn't help herself. She never believed I would find out. Or that anyone would get hurt. It was a completely selfish thing. She was apparently very happy in our marriage. She convinced herself that she deserves this fling and that I probably supported her choice if I knew how happy she was at the time. She convinced herself that this affair would pass, and we would all go back to living happy family lives ever after. She had no idea I had found out, and only when I started to check out did she start to question what was going on. I learned she broke up with the AP about 1.5 months ago. The buzz had started to wear off. She gave me her phone to check and she had blocked him. When I unblocked him, messages dating back one and a half months started pouring in. She had been trying to re-engage me in our marriage, but I hadn't shown any interest of having anything to do with her. Up until I sat her down, she was convinced that we would be able to find a way back together and that we would end up stronger than ever. When she looked into my eyes when I confronted her, she understood that this was probably the end of the line. The reality of it all hit her like a ton of bricks. I tried asking her some questions, primarily about what it was in her mind that gave her the right to do this to us, to our children. Basically, it's nothing but selfishness on her part. I realized, like so many of you pointed out, I will never get the answers that I'm looking for, because they don't exist. There is no acceptable reason for cheating, therefore I will never get an acceptable answer. I did, however, get closure in a weird way. I got to explain to her how badly she had hurt me, the incredible pain she had caused. I got her to accept that it's her fault that our marriage is broken, and that our children will grow up in a broken home. This gave me a strange feeling of peace. She had been reading everything she could about fixing a broken marriage after infidelity. She had a complete timeline and detailed confession signed and everything ready for me. I haven't read it, I just gave it to my lawyer. 
She begged and begged and begged and begged for a second chance. She would do anything she said. I told her I didn't believe her. In fact, I didn't believe anything she said. I just don't trust her. She asked me what she could do to fix it. I told her she broke it. If she doesn't know how con she expect me to present her with a solution. I asked her if she was in my shoes, what would she answer to that? If anything? These types of questions went back and forth for a while. In the end, she conceded that had the roles been reversed, she probably wouldn't forgive this either. I told her I had gotten an SDI test and that I would a DNA test the kids. She completely broke down for about 20 minutes when she heard this. She insisted that this was the only time she had ever cheated or done anything out of line. Again, after some back and forth, she conceded that I had no reason to believe her. And if she was in my shoes, she would probably do the same. I asked her if AP's wife knew. She didn't know. She conceded that she deserved to know. I asked her if she should tell her or should I? She asked me if I would consider reconciling or marriage counseling if she told her. I told her no, but I said it would help her regain a tiny bit of respect in my eyes. She promised to tell the AP's wife and everybody else she would go to HR as well and confess everything. Again, I told her I don't really believe her. She swore she would never be with anyone else and that she would never give up on getting back with me, even if it took the rest of her life. I didn't believe her, but I didn't say anything. It was getting redundant at this point. She offered me a one-sided open marriage, access to all her communication, 247 availability. I told her that I had talked to Monica and that I am waiting because I don't want to cheat. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to be in an open relationship. It would hurt her if we did that, and I don't want to hurt other people like she hurt me. I don't want to be her jailer either. Constantly snooping on her and being suspicious isn't grounds for a heathy relationship. I am not interested in intimacy without a deeper connection either. Sex for the sake of mechanical sex has no value for me. If I need mechanical release can fix that on my own. I don't need a partner for that. At this point we were all exhausted, we had been going out for over five hours, and my wife had been crying on a scale from bad to absolutely horrifying almost the entire time. We weren't going to get any further on this, it was done. I told her very clearly that the love I used to have for her had died. I didn't recognize the person she had become anymore. Our family had died by her hand and that I would go through with divorce. I told her she could not undo what she has done. The only way to avoid this result would have been to not start the affair seven months ago. I didn't want our marriage back. I didn't want her back. I did not want more pain. I suggested we go no contact for a while to get some distance and perspective. I told her I already filed and that my mind was made up. We could start family therapy to co-parent, but beyond that I don't even want to see her. This was incredibly painful to tell her. She was crying hard while mumbling no, 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 please no, please no. When I got up to leave she got a massive, almost explosive nosebleed. She started to reach for me, but she passed out. I managed to catch her before she hit the floor. I drove her and her sister to the ER and stayed until I learned she would be okay. Last night and today STBXW has been telling everyone what she has done. The AP's wife called me this morning to get confirmation that what my wife had told her was true. I sent her copies of some of the evidence. I just learned she kicked her husband out. She wants to meet and look at more of the evidence. She has been suspecting for a long time but haven't had anything solid. I suggested we sit down for dinner tomorrow. She had a need to talk and asked if we could talk on the phone. I don't know if I can take that on right now. I told her maybe later. I freely admit I am feeling feeling like a piece of S. I haven't been able to sleep. Cracks are forming in my resolve. I know I must stay strong, but it's very hard. Why do I feel so guilty? Why do I feel responsible to try to fix this? We may be able to fool ourselves for a while, but it will most likely not work long term. Some of her friends and relatives have been calling me up and cursing me out. They think I should give her a second chance. But in my mind I am thinking, why drag out the pain? Better to get it over with so we can start to heal and build new lives. So that's it. Nothing spectacular, no revenge, no resolve, no peace. No happy ending, just more pain for all of us. My mind is in a very dark place right now. I don't know what to do, to be honest. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.